Summary of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs Linda Brent is born into slavery, but she grows up in a happy home with her parents and younger brother William because her father works as a carpenter outside of his mistress's house. She also lives near her grandmother, who buys her own freedom when Linda was young. Linda's mother dies when she is six years old, and Linda goes to live with the family's mistress. She is kind to her and teaches her about religion. Six years later, the mistress dies. Linda hopes that the mistress will set her free in her will, but instead, she leaves Linda to her young niece, and Linda has to go live with the Flints. Linda's life before moving in with the Flints is very different from what she does now. She and her brother have to work hard and don't get much food. Mrs. Flint is mean to them and often beats her slaves. She won't even let Linda go to the funeral of her own father. Linda's grandmother tries to take care of her family and keep the kids happy, but it looks like trouble is on the way. William, Linda's brother, and Benjamin, her young uncle, are both unhappy with the new rules in their lives, and Dr. Flint has started to make sexual advances on Linda and tell her that she belongs to him and must do whatever he wants. Benjamin runs away from his master some time after this. He is caught and put in the city jail, where he stays for months until a slave dealer buys him. Linda's grandma tries to get enough money together to buy Benjamin, but he runs away again before she can. He finally finds safety in New York. Grandmother continues to save money so she can buy some of her other children's freedom. She is able to buy and free her son, Philip, who is Linda's uncle. Linda has tried to make her life in the Flint home bearable, but now that it's clear that Dr. Flint is interested in her sexually, Mrs. Flint takes out her anger on Linda, who has no power. Mrs. Flint asks Linda questions about how she talks to her husband and makes her sleep in her own room, where Linda is afraid Mrs. Flint might kill her one day. Still, Dr. Flint is not embarrassed and often yells at Linda for not obeying him. Linda says that these kinds of situations are common in the South, where it's common for male slave owners to have many children with female slaves who aren't their wives and for the slave owners' wives to get back at the unhappy moms. Linda falls in love with a free black worker when she is 15 years old, and he wants to marry her. Dr. Flint, on the other hand, won't agree to the marriage or sell her to the builder. Also, Linda is afraid to have kids with the carpenter because they would officially belong to Dr. Flint and be under his control. Dr. Flint is angry that she has fallen in love with someone else, so he threatens to kill her or throw her in jail. Eventually, Linda breaks up with the builder because she is afraid that Dr. Flint will get back at him. She puts all of her energy into taking care of William and planning a way for him to get out of slavery. Linda leaves her own story to talk about how cruel measures are common and accepted in slavery. For instance, one man in her city locks a runaway slave in a cotton gin until he dies, and he doesn't get in any trouble for it. Slavery is especially bad for young girls, who are both physically and sexually abused and have no legal or practical way to protect themselves or their virginity from men who don't care if they have unwanted children who are slaves. Slavery is humiliating to white people and unfair to the people who are forced into it. Dr. Flint starts making plans to build Linda her own house outside of town. Linda becomes desperate and does something, even though she knows that if her husband isn't around, she will have no power at all. She gives in to the advances of Mr. Sands, another white man, because she thinks he will protect her from Dr. Flint and because she would rather give herself to a man than submit to compulsion. Even though she doesn't have any other choice, she feels very bad about giving up her physical purity. Even her grandma doesn't know what she's going to do until she gets pregnant. When she tells Dr. Flint that she is going to have a baby, he gets angry and kicks her out of the house. Her grandma is also mad at her, telling her, I would rather see you dead than be a single mother. She gives her a place to stay away from Dr. Flint at her house, and he leaves her there for the rest of her pregnancy. In the middle of her pregnancy, Linda gets very sick and has to give birth early. She has often wanted to die because of how hard her life has been, but now she knows she has to stay living for the baby, so she wills herself to get better. Dr. Flint comes to see her often and reminds her that her son belongs to him. 
He also sends her letters that are sexually explicit. Linda calls her son Benjamin, or Benny, after her uncle who ran away. Linda keeps living with her grandma, and she and Mr. Sands have a daughter, Ellen, in the end. She starts going to church meetings for slaves, but she is disappointed when the preacher just gives a speech about how the Bible tells slaves to obey their masters. Once, a prayer leader laughs at a mother who is upset because her children have been sold away from her. Linda starts to think that practicing Christianity in the South is mostly fake and just another way to keep slaves in line. Dr. Flint is very involved in the Episcopal Church, but he keeps pushing Linda to join him in sin. Linda is sent away from the city to Dr. Flint's farm because she still won't sleep with him. There, she works as a maid to get the house ready for Dr. Flint's new daughter-in-law. She brings Ellen with her, but the hard life on the farm makes the young girl sick and upset, so Linda sends her back to her grandmother. When Linda is away from her children, she often thinks about running away, but her grandmother talks her out of it. When Linda finds out that both of her children are going to be broken in on the farm, she runs away in the middle of the night. Linda hides at the house of a friend she doesn't name for a few weeks. Dr. Flint sends teams all over the city to look for her. Once, they show up at a friend's house, so she has to hide in a swamp, where a snake bites her. At some point, Linda's grandmother tells a white woman she has known for years that she has a secret. The woman decides to hide Linda in her own house and try to find a way to get to the free states. The woman tells her cook, Betty, to come get her, and then she hides in her attic for months. While this is going on, Linda hears that William and her children have been put in jail to force her to tell who she is. Mr. Sands buys the children and Benny in order to get them away from Dr. Flint. They are taken back to Linda's grandma, where they can live safely. But Dr. Flint is still looking for Linda, and he needs to find a better place for her to hide. Uncle Philip makes a secret crawlspace in Linda's grandmother's shed, and Linda is taken there. You can't stand up or walk around, and there's no light or air until Linda drills a few holes in the wall. She can watch her kids play in the yard, but she doesn't talk to them. As time goes on, Linda's joints start to get stiff, and she gets sick a lot. Her family members treat her at night by sneaking up to the shed. Seven years go by while Linda is stuck in this hiding place. Mr. Sands is eventually elected to Congress. Before he goes to Washington, Linda meets with him in secret and gets him to agree to free their children as soon as possible. William goes with Mr. Sands to Washington and then on a trip to the North. Mr. Sands is very happy with William's work as a helper. But in Boston, William leaves. Mr. Sands comes back with a new wife, but Linda's brother is not there. Dr. Flint starts to threaten to take the kids back, saying that the deal to sell them was not legal. Mr. Sands decides to send Ellen North to live with his cousin. He tells Linda that he has freed Ellen and that she will be able to go to school, but the cousin writes a letter to Linda's grandma saying that Ellen has been given to her as a helper. Linda wants to get her kids away from both guys as soon as possible. After Ellen leaves, a family friend named Peter figures out how Linda can get away on a ship going to Philadelphia. At first, Linda's grandma tries to talk her out of going, so they give the place to Fanny, another escaped slave who is in the area. But just before the boat leaves, someone sees Linda in the shed, and she has to run away quickly. After saying a sad goodbye to her grandma and Benny, she and Fanny leave North Carolina on a ship. At first, she doesn't trust the captain and the sailors, but they turn out to be kind and gentlemanly, and the women arrive safely in Philadelphia, where they stay with a black preacher and his family for a few days. Soon, Linda goes to New York, where she stays with a friend from the South. She looks for Ellen right away. She finds out that her daughter wasn't sent to school like she said she would be. Instead, she works as a helper and is eager to move in with her mother. Mrs. Hobbs, who is Mr. Sands's cousin, says again that Ellen has been given to her. So she can be close to her daughter, Linda gets a job as a babysitter for Mrs. Bruce, a white woman. Her new boss turns out to be kind and caring, and he is also very against slavery. She also offers to take Ellen in, 
but Linda is afraid of upsetting the Hobbs family because they know she is a runaway slave. Dr. Flint goes to New York to try to find out where Linda is. Linda goes to stay in Boston for a few weeks without telling Mrs. Bruce that she is on the run. In the meantime, her grandma puts Benny on a ship headed north, where he meets his mother again. He moves to Boston to live with William while Linda works for Mrs. Bruce. During the summer, Mrs. Bruce takes her child and Linda on a trip to the country. When she gets home and goes to see Ellen, she finds that Mrs. Hobbs's brother, Mr. Thorne, is there. He is from the city where she was born, and he probably already knows that she ran away, so Linda is very afraid that he will find her. A few days later, Ellen worriedly tells her that Mr. Thorne has written to Dr. Flint to tell him where Linda is. Linda and Ellen get out of the city and move to Boston, where Linda gets a job sewing and lives with her two kids. Linda is sad to hear that Mrs. Bruce has died in the spring. Mr. Bruce wants to take his daughter to England to meet the cousins of her mother's side of the family, and he asks Linda to go with them as her babysitter. She agrees because she wants to make more money so she can take care of her kids. She is surprised that there aren't many signs of racism in England, where she can always eat at the same table as her boss. Even though she sees a lot of poor people, it's clear that their lives are much better than those of American slaves because they are free and can get an education and improve their lives. Two years later, Ellen is getting ready to go to private school to learn how to be a teacher. Linda feels ashamed that she has to tell her daughter that her father is not her real father. But her daughter calmly says that she has always known who her father was and that she doesn't care about him at all. She adds, all my love is for you. Linda goes back to New York after her daughter leaves to work for Mr. Bruce's second wife, the new Mrs. Bruce, and her baby daughter. Around this time, new laws are made that make it possible for slave owners to take back slaves who have fled to free states by force. Linda feels less and less safe, and she doesn't even like going for walks with the baby outside. Soon, her family will let her know that Dr. Flint is going to New York again. She tells Mrs. Bruce a secret and her boss sends her to stay with a friend in New England while he is there. Dr. Flint dies after this last scare. Linda thinks she should forgive the person who hurt her in the past, but she can't be sad about his death. She is still in danger, too, because his daughter and son-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. Dodge, still want her. Soon, they, too, will be in New York, and Linda will have to hide once more. Mrs. Bruce offers to buy Linda and set her free, but Linda doesn't think it's right to have to pay for her freedom, which she already has a right to. But her boss sends a lawyer to the Dodges in secret to try to buy her, and he is successful. Linda's grandma lives to hear that she is free, but she dies soon after. Linda feels like a huge weight has been lifted off her back, and she can now live her life however she wants. She is still trying to make enough money to buy a house for her children, but she is much happy and more satisfied than she used to be. Even though it's painful to think about her life as a slave, she also has tender memories, like the time she spent with her beloved grandma. About the author Harriet Jacobs escaped to New York with her two children after being born a slave in South Carolina. Harriet began writing about her life while she was working as a nurse for the Willis family, who are called the Bruces in this story. Her friend Amy Post, a well-known Quaker feminist, urged her to do so. She released incidents under the name Linda Brent in 1861, just as the Civil War was beginning. As the book got more famous, Jacobs started giving talks and went back to the South to help freed slaves and Black War refugees get food and a place to live. By the end of the war, she had focused on building schools so that freed slaves and their children could get an education. In the years after the war, she did this job with her daughter Louisa, who had become a teacher. Incidents went out of print after the Civil War. Because it was written under a fake name, experts thought it was a book. In the 1970s and 1980s, female historian Jean Fagan Yellen showed it was a memoir. She also brought the book and its author back into the public eye, making it one of the most well-known slave tales. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.